Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to flash and prepare and also use the Drone Mesh FPV Drone Finder V2. Now this is a complete kit without the antenna and without an XT60 connector, but it comes with everything. And if you've missed part one, please check the links down below to see how to go about building it. Now we're going to flash it and just go over the features and how we were able to use it. And again, this is based on the RX 5808 project and uh, I'll have everything linked down below. Now these are also available on Banggood now, so they'll be shipped out within a couple days once you make your order. Order, obviously a weekday and um, it's a really great way to support the channel guys this will keep you know the open hardware flight controller going it'll keep uh, we just got a bunch of new contributions actually which I'll be going over in the next video which is pretty insane and um, yeah it's a really useful piece of technology and we're also gonna be doing the field testing of it I've already done that but we're gonna see it in a later video and it's quite useful for FPV wings for your drones for even camera drones believe it or not anything that's broadcasting at a 5.8 gigahertz frequency such as this one the Xiaomi Mi A3 drone uh, also broadcasts at 5.8 gigahertz, which you can also find if you somehow tend to lose it, uh, which is something really nice. So let's hop on the PC and uh, let's get programming before we going into how to use this thing. Okay, so the first step to, in order for us to install the firmware is we need to download a software called the Arduino IDE. Now the Arduino IDE is what will be used to flash anything Arduino and our project is basically based on Arduino here. So what you want to do is you want to go to the Windows installer. I'll have this link down below. So you want to go to the Windows installer for Windows XP and up. Don't take the Windows app because it's it won't install the drivers correctly and you will never be able to flash it and you think everything is broken. So just go to the Windows installer for Windows XP and up click on it it'll ask you if you would like to donate if you would that'd be great if you don't just click just download and then once you do that it'll start downloading and once it's finished downloading you just just click on it next 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 and you should be good to go next thing you want to do is uh, we want to see the uh, rx5808 project which is the source code now this project again is based on the rx5808 pro diversity project and i took the source code from there and uh, just worked on it and created the own my own design of hardware in order to uh, make this kit possible which is the drone finder and it also is a ground station so a diversity version will be upcoming later on in a couple months or so but this is the main project however you can also download the source code from here but i highly recommend you get it from my forum because on the forum i have it edited to work uh, just perfect with the drone finder kit here so I'll have a link to the drone forum here, the drone mesh forum, and it's right there. So you can just click this and just it'll start downloading. Now make sure once you download this, you set it up in a folder where you know it's going to be. For example, here it is, it just finished downloading. And now the next step is we need to extract the files. So we're going to go ahead because it is a zip file. So I've gone ahead and extracted them as you can tell right there. And we want to go inside. We want to go one more again. And then we want to go to source. And then we want to go to the RX5808 Pro Diversity. And then you should have already finished installing your Arduino software. And you should see a blue logo by the RX5808. Even if you don't, you should, you know, that's it. This is it right here. RX5808 Pro Diversity.ino. So you can find it in the files here. So if you scroll down, you'll see it. So we're going to click this. Once we click this, this should open up this project into our Arduino software. All right. So everything is open. So the next step, you want to go up here. You see this little arrow. You want to click on this arrow. You want to go down, go to settings.h. Just double check everything. And then we see this little uh, SSH1106. This is a library that needs to be installed. So what we can do is just grab this link here. It'll also be linked down below. Copy it. And we're going to open our browser. And uh, just put it into our browser here. And just press OK. And we should see this page right here from github it's the adafruit sh1106 library and what you want to do is you want to go to the green one here click uh, cloner download and then download a zip all right now you want to go ahead and find that file and insert it into the same area where you downloaded the firmware for the drone finder kit so i'm going to say show where it is and i'm going to grab my folder there it is this is where the project was and i had it in the drone finder part two folder so i'm going to grab my library so now they're in the same area here uh, so we have this one we don't need to extract the files from the out of fruit library here so what we want to do is we want to go back to the arduino software and then we're going to go to sketch up here we're going to go include library and then add zip file and we're going to go ahead and find where the uh out of fruit library we just downloaded okay so this is exactly where it is this is it just say open 
I'm going to get an error saying that the library named already exists because I already have it. But if you, if you don't have it, you're not going to have this issue here. So, okay, that's good. And then what we want to do next is we want to click on verify up here. And we still have not connected the Arduino or the FPV drone finder kit just yet. I want to make sure everything is running good and it should be compiling. If you take a look at the bottom left here, also the bottom right. So here it says compiling sketch and then here you see the uh, current status or progress bar if you want to say. All right, so it's saying low memory, which is absolutely normal. There's nothing to worry about there. Stability problems may occur. There's no instability problems that will occur. Everything's running perfect. So done compiling. So we're basically done here. Now the next step to do is just to bring in the kit and actually install the usb onto it so let's go ahead and do that okay so i'm going to go ahead and install the usb into my arduino now and we want to go is you want to go to tools you want to make sure you go to board and choose arduino nano okay and then you want to go to the processor at mega 328p very important you do that and then you want to go back to tools again port um, you, if you have one, then it should be it. If not, then just try both of them until one of them flashes. I know mine's COM22, so yeah, I'm just going to click on that. And I'll just leave everything else default. Now we want to click upload. See, first we clicked verify, now we want to click upload. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it and just wait for it to finish. Now, if you get errors like um, AVR unresponding or something like that, those types of errors means that the driver was not installed correctly, but it's super rare that it happens. It'll possibly only happen to you if you downloaded the Windows app version of this, uh, the, the, you know, that that might happen to you. And it's done uploading, so that's it. Let's go back on the camera and uh, let's go over the settings here and how to use this thing. All right, guys, so once it's complete, we're gonna go ahead and install our power. So I'm just going to set that up. This should take up to a 4S just fine. And as you can tell here, we have it just, just boots right away. So the first things you want to do is, is one of the most important steps. You want to remove your antenna because we want to do the calibration sequence. Now, I know this drone that I'm about to boot up is on A1, so channel A1. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it on A1 here. And I'm going to click, I'm going to hold the mode button. You have to hold it. So let's just hold it because we're going to have to calibrate the RSSI. And then we want to go to the next here or up and then we want, yeah, we want to go to the settings and press mode again. And now it says, uh, press mode for RSSI calibration. So we press the middle one and then it says, turn off all VTXs and remove the antenna. So, okay. So we're going to press once that's all done. That's correct. I'm just going to click this. Now it's scanning for the lowest RSSI. All right. Now I'm going to turn on my VTX here. You only have to do this once. And then we're going to install our antenna here. You want to do this kind of quick before it sleeps or times out. And then I'm going to click mode once everything is installed. And now it's scanning the for the highest RSSI. And we should get something like this. Yours might be different. So it's saying the minimum and maximum. Now it will write that into memory so it'll know. And it'll be more accurate since now we've calibrated. You only have to do this once. You don't have to do this every time. So now let's just do band scan and just test this. See how well it's working. See, so that's perfect because that's where the channel is. All right, so that's band scanner. And if we want to exit, we want to hold again the mode button. Now we've exited. Search, you might think it does automatic search and it does, but let's just take a look at this. So this is the default page here. And uh, if you hold the mode for just two seconds and let go, you get this side options here. M means manual mode. So you get to ch go through the channels or frequencies. So we, let's just do auto. This is auto. And now to get out of it, you have to hold the mode button for two seconds and let go. And now if it's on auto, which is A, and we say, let's move the channel up, it'll do an automatic search here. So we got B8, a good signal. And uh, we got A1. Now I know this is on A1. So this is why, as you can tell, it's a full bar right there. So yeah, that's just for auto mode if you're using it as a ground station and these types of things. Now let's just say you wanted to go into manual mode. So you hold this again for two seconds let go and then we get the side menu here we're going to click on the a now it's in manual mode and uh let's just uh and if we move down here this will this you could change between uh changing the increments of frequencies or the band and channel name so so when it says abf right here that's going to go incremental from a1 so it's gonna, next channel will be a2 so manual mode abf let's just hold for two seconds to get out of it and if we move up now we see we move up by you know a1 a2 a3 a4 now let's just say you wanted to do this by frequency instead what you have to do is you have to hold the mode button for two seconds let go 
go down to this one and then press the mode button on it again and now it'll change in frequency increments so we're going to hold the mode button again twice so we can, two seconds so we can hold so we can get out of that menu and now if i'm switching we can see that it's not going in the uh, incremental order of the channels up here but it's actually going into the frequency so 5785 5790 5800 uh, so that's what it's doing here. So, you know, you might think it's all messed up if, if you didn't know how to set this up. And if, as you can tell, I just held the mode button a little bit too long here. So we just need two seconds, let go, and we get this. Now, I like it. So I'm going to go down here. I like it to stay by the ABC order and on manual mode. Okay. So right there, we're just going to hold it for two seconds, let go, and let's go to A1 here. All right, so that's perfect. As you can tell, there's our signal. It's very beautiful. And again, this is based off the RX 5808 project. So settings is just to calibrate the RSSI. If you accidentally go in it again, you cannot escape it. So I highly recommend you don't calibrate, just reboot it again, just like this. So you don't ruin the already good uh, settings you have set up. So there we go. We're on A1 again, so that's really nice. And uh, as you can tell here, there's an audio, ground, and video. So we can actually pipe the video uh, to anything else we wanted to, you know, you can pipe it, the video that we're receiving, you can pipe it to another screen, uh, you can do all kinds of crazy cool things with this, which is something really nice I like about this, which can also be used, like I mentioned, as a ground station, and also as a drone finder, which I will be showing you in a later video, where I have my friend hide a drone, a uh, little baby drone, and uh, he's going to fly over me and record me while I go look for it with the drone finder kit, and as well as I have a GoPro helmet on my head so we can actually see how useful it is. Now for antenna, I'm using this one right here, the RJX Hobby. I'll have it linked down below. It's a really good antenna. It actually comes with an adapter. It comes SMA and RP SMA. So you can you, you change it. It comes automatically with an adapter and you can remove the adapter if you don't need it. And if you needed it, you can set it up, which I find to be something pretty cool. And when you boot this up, you don't have to have the antenna on. You don't have to worry about it firing itself because we're just receiving, we're not outputting anything. So yeah, these kits are available on Banggood. Go ahead and check them out. Purchase one that will really support the channel. It'll be a really nice way to support the channel and keep these projects going, uh, such as the Open Hardware Flight Controller project. And I do have a lot more things coming up, which I think you might find pretty interesting also. Um, really interesting, actually. I came up with a couple things that are very useful for a lot of people, especially in the winter. If you want to fly from your car and have your, uh, basically your R9M module on top of your car and then have it broadcast wireless down to your controller. So yeah, I'm working on a couple new projects as well. So yeah, this is a really nice way to do support the channel and you also get something really useful and uh, we'll see its field test or just field usage in the upcoming video. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll set up a special support side on my forum for this product. So if you have any issues, go there. I will be constantly checking that. And uh, if there's any issues, I will help you right away to solve that issue. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.